Hello everyone, today I'm sowing sweet peas. Um, this is without a doubt my all time favourite flower. And now I grow the Spencer varieties because they have this sort of pickety edge to the petals. They're all kind of ruffled and fluffled, the petals. Your standard sweet pea is more of a straight petal and it's much smaller. These are big, blousy, in your face and full of scents. And that's why I grow them. And this is what I grow them. These are from a company called Eagle Sweet Peas and I grow the same collection every year. And I have tried some of their other collections and although they're nice, none as good as the Chelsea collection, in my opinion. Eight varieties, all different colours and 20 seeds of each one. And that whole thing, 12 quid. And I will sow half of these and the other half next year. So six pound for a full frame of sweet peas and tons and tons of flowers in the house. So the first thing with sweet peas is they are a hardy annual. Now I spoke about this on the last video and I'll put a little link up, to, up here so that you can see that if you've missed it. There's a difference between hardy and half hardy annuals. Basically with the hardy annuals what that means is they are a lot stronger, they will withstand cold. And what you'll often hear about is about hardy annuals is that they are hardy down to a temperature. With sweet peas, it's, they are hardy down to about minus four. Anything less than that and you're in dodgy territory with them. Now, you can sow these in the autumn to get a good jump start on the year following. If your temperatures drop down to minus four, chances are you're going to lose the plants. Now, it's only in the last couple of years I've only been sowing them at the start of the year. Uh, probably three years. I still want to sow a batch in autumn if I can to get earlier blooms. Doesn't always work out for me because of that frost factor. You lose them. So the last couple of years, certainly last year and, and now this year, I'm sowing them in January. I can get them going and they'll be protected to a certain extent inside one of the polytunnels and in the greenhouse at home. So if we get another freeze, I can get my hands on them quickly and protect them. But other than that, they don't need any attention at all. Um, and I say with the half hardy annuals, you really want to be sowing those. They're quite susceptible to cold. So you really want to be sowing those three to four weeks before your last frost date and if you look into your last frost date just type it into google and then type in your area and you'll find a predicted when on average on years gone by your last frost is and you'll have a rough idea of your last frost date so that's really the difference between hardy annuals and half hardy annuals so there we go right these what i've done here is i've got sieve compost and i filled this tray it's quite deep and they're a kind of a root trainer, not strictly a root trainer, but a kind of. These trays are from container wise and it's one of their deep cell trays. And I filled it with sieved compost, just lightly filled them up and then I've watered them, which compresses the compost down. There's a gap there of a good half to three quarters of an inch on top. I'm going to put two seeds in each cell and then I'll cover it in dry compost. And then by capillary reaction, which basically means because you've got dry on top of the wet, it works like a sponge and it very, very slowly soaks up through that dry compost. As it's doing that, it's drawing the water past the seed and wetting the seed all around it, and therefore it then germinates. This will then go on my kitchen floor, on some newspaper, and then I'll put a sheet of newspaper over the top just to exclude light and to help keep moisture in. Now, the dangers of doing this at this time of the year is you've got compost that's probably been, it'll have been sat wherever it is, whether it's in a garden centre or in your greenhouse, polytunnel or shed. Slugs have probably found their way in there and they possibly have laid eggs. So when you sieve your compost, and I just found two this morning when I sieved it for this, I found two big slugs in there. So the chances are there's one in there I've missed. If not, there's chances are that there might be an egg or two in there for new baby slugs to come along. And as I take this home and put it on my kitchen floor, there's every chance that will hatch and start munching on my sweet peas. 
I've had this happen in my kitchen where there's no possible way a slug can get to it. I've had my sweet pea seedlings munched overnight where about three quarters of this tray was germinated. Just before I went to bed, I could see them all up and by morning, a whole lot had gone. So to defend against that, I do use slug pellets. Now bear with me, a lot of people are anti these straight away. Two things I've got against slug pellets. These are not the old blue ones, the really poisonous ones. These are now organic and don't know much more about them than that. But the thing I don't like about them, which says to me to use a lot, is the size of the container and then the size of the blooming hole in the top. Because one slug pellet will attract one slug. So it stands to reason if you shake that out like a powder everywhere, you could have hundreds, maybe thousands of them, and you will attract hundreds and thousands of slugs. Yes, they may eat the slug pellets, but you're attracting them to the area that you're trying to deter slugs from being in. So I use these very safely and very responsibly. This tray will have two slug pellets on, just pretty much where I put my fingers there. One there, one there. Once one pellet disappears, I will place another one. And that is all I will use, the two slug pellets. They're safe from the pets at home and they're safe from wildlife getting hold of them. And I believe I was told uh, in a, or I read in a reasonable white paper with creditable sources that a hedgehog, for instance, would have to eat 2,000 of the old fashioned blue slug pellets to become mildly unwell. These are organic, you don't have that fear, and they will kill slugs. And if you use them as responsibly as they say I do, then you won't have that issue. The only places I use these is on my hanging shelf in the polytunnel, which I've shown you many times before, or on my greenhouse bench at home. They never go on the ground, they never go anywhere else. And I think the size of this and the hole in the top is ludicrous because it's encouraging you to use lots. I think it should be a shaker or a dispenser of some dis description because that will last me a lifetime and anybody who comes after me as well. So that's with the protection. Now also with the seeds, as I uh, start to sow these, um, there's a lot of conjecture about soaking your seeds. Do you need to soak them or do you need to chit them? And chitting simply means you've got your seed there and you'll use a knife and put it on and you'll just chip a little bit out of the seed coat so that the water can get in and make it germinate. If you use the method I described to you, you won't need to soak and you won't need to chit because you're soaking them by osmosis. by the process of just leaving them to germinate. They will take a little bit longer to germinate. I'll be looking to see signs of these germinating within about two weeks. And I'm just putting two in each cell, one variety for each strip. So just cover them over with some dry compost, sift dry compost straight from the bag and let's say osmosis or capillary reaction, as they, whichever you want to call it, will take up the water, pass the seed and germinate them. Now, when you've got them at home, like I say, I put mine on the kitchen floor at home, on newspaper, with newspaper on the top. Once you see, once you've lifted it and you're seeing signs of germination, take that paper off and remove it. Leave them there and leave them there until your first leaves open and then take them out and put them in a cool greenhouse or a polytunnel or a cold frame somewhere slightly protected uh, they will withstand low temperatures but you want to encourage those first few leaves to come up and you want them in some light so a windowsill is not really ideal for it they need to be outside where they can get maximum light now when they're up to four leaves so four sets of leaves, they'll be up here somewhere. You just with your thumb and forefinger, just pinch the top out. 
and this will encourage branching from the three remaining sets of leaves behind and you'll get three branches and that will carry on as the plant grows up so what you're getting then is as the plant grows up and you planted it out those side shoots you tie them in at the same time as you're tying in the branch higher up so never forget to tie in those because you'll get the flowers at the top first off from your first flush of flowers around about sort of end of June into July but then those side shoots will also flower and they will flower upwards as they go so if you've tied in those side shoots um, you'll get a nice organized layer of flowers on your frame and I've got my frame over there um, it worked very well for me last year I had tons and tons of flowers so very important that you do that if you sowed them in autumn and you got them through first of all congratulations well done because we got through an awful freeze last year um, so you've done well to do that but you'll find that your plants will be already up here now and they'll already be automatically branching they'll do that anyway we only do we only pinch them out at this time of year to encourage the plants to multi sprouts as soon as possible now recently thompson and morgan got in touch with me because they wanted to feature one of my videos from last year on their blog and talk about it where i made my sweet pea frame it out there and i said yeah no problem and they published it and that was wonderful i'm very thankful for it and then literally a day after it appeared i got another email from them saying would i like to choose two or three packets of sweet pea seeds so i did and these are the ones that i've chosen um the first one is this one which is a sort of a sweet pea uh, pink one these are all high perfume by the way then this one a white supreme and unfortunately this one hasn't got uh, a picture but is sweet pea odor artist high sense uh, and this is like a cream color with i believe like a violet Pickety edge, but they're all sorts of nice big blousy sweet peas like I've like uh, like I like to grow, and I've decided as a trial, never done this before. They're the ones I sowed earlier, and I've sowed these in these massive, great big, deep cell trays here. There's 15 there, there's 40 there, and these are the big deep ones from um, container wise again, and I've. I'm trying to make like a super plug or a super plant. So each cell's got four or five seeds in there. We'll see how it does. I think it will work fairly well. The roots still should go down, so they shouldn't tangle around. Hopefully, we'll see, but this is the trial and we'll just see how we get them get on. And these will all go in the garden at home if this works out. These are the ones to go on the frame over there. So that's about it for today. Don't forget to check the hardiness ratings of any of the seeds or plants that you want to sow at this time of the year. Just do a quick Google and see what it's hardy down to and you'll hear and see that expression so much through your gardening life. Hardy down to maybe minus 10 or hardy down to, in Sweet Pea's case, minus 4. Don't be afraid to look that up and learn from it. And if you look it up at the same time, you'll remember it and this is the important thing with educating yourself for the future it just makes you a better gardener overall and that's what we all want and certainly what I want but anyway please look after yourself stay safe and I'll see you all very soon turn on now.